Welcome again to Pimp My iPad. In episode 2, we take a look at using gestures, in particular our multi-touch gestures. Using gestures on your iPad can save you a lot of time and allow you to quickly navigate around. So revisiting our basic controls, swipe left or right to move from uh, the home screen, search and all your apps. Now just click settings and we'll activate multitasking gestures. So we're in general settings here, just go down to multitasking gestures and on and off. And underneath you also have a list of common gestures, so you can see use four or five fingers to pinch to the home screen, for example. So first up, we'll demonstrate one of the most common multitasking gestures, which is a pinch to home screen. So I'll just demonstrate this now. I'll just load up an app. So how about Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine? And with four fingers, Place them on the screen and drag them in and pinch to home screen. So that's how you can quickly shut down an app basically. I'll just show you one more time. Loading it up again. And four fingers, just like that. So that way you don't have to double tap the home screen button. The next gesture I'm going to demonstrate is a four finger drag up to access your multitasking bar. So with four fingers you drag up, and as you can see, you can access all your apps, your controls, and just select an app from there and edit them as you will. Now I'll demonstrate changing between apps without even going back to the main screen. So we'll just open up Flipboard now, to demonstrate this. And just by swiping to the left or right with four fingers, so basically a four finger drag, as I'm doing now, you can change between apps. So that was the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, now the Safari, now Settings, now YouTube by the looks of it, no, the App Store, sorry. That's just learning, keep on going. Now YouTube, now Twitter. Fortunately my internet's not too fast, so nothing's loading here right now, and I don't have anything open. But we'll just go back along, and basically that's how you quickly change between apps. For those of you who like thumb typing on your iPhone, we can actually bring this feature to your iPad as well. So now we'll just go and load up Safari, and I'll demonstrate how you can split your keyboard to enable thumb typing. So we'll demonstrate by doing a Google search. Just go down the bottom here, into the bottom right hand corner, click the keyboard item, and click split. As you can see, it's now split the keyboard, and I've just lifted it up, and I can basically type with my thumbs. I'm not that quick at it, but some people, this is a great feature and something that you might not know about. To bring the keyboard back together, we click on that keyboard icon again, and just click Dock and Merge, and our keyboard comes back together as it was, as it normally is. Shake to undo is a useful feature on the iPhone and I just thought I'd highlight the fact that you can actually do this on an iPad as well, again. Admittedly it's probably not as easy to shake an iPad or doesn't look, I guess, as normal but it can be done so I'll just show you it quickly. I'll just do test shake undo. So shake it and as you can see, the undo button just comes up, and I click that. I'm now going to finish off with one of the best inbuilt features of the iPad, and that's the gesture assistance and custom gestures. These are both sort of interrelated, and I'm going to demonstrate how you can use these features to get the most out of them. So again, we go to settings, we go to general, go down to accessibility, that's down here, and then scroll down to assistive touch. We want to switch this on, and this allows us to bring up the assistive touch menu and the gestures menu, which is this little dot that I'm moving around here. So this will suddenly appear on your screen. If you click this dot, it will load up and you have gestures, 
favorites, device information, and home. And if you click any of those buttons, it will perform that function. So we'll just do a quick example of a gesture in action. We'll do the four finger swipe up to access the taskbar. You just go gesture, select four fingers, and just by tapping, it performs that function. So I don't need to use all four fingers to do that. Now I'll have a look at some of the other features. So how about some of the device features in here? And we'll go to rotate screen. And you can rotate the screen around right, upside down, left, portrait, and we will cycle back through them slowly. That's home. You can also change the volume, so volume up, volume down, access more features such as the multitasking bar, in that case pulling it down because we've already got it open, bringing it up again, you can mute, unmute, take a screenshot, so there's plenty of features in there. Our favorite sections is our custom section and we can add more custom gestures here that we've created as well. And this is where we would access them from. So to do that, we go to settings and we load up the same pathway to accessibility down to assistive touch and there is our custom gestures and we create a new gesture. So I'm just going to drag backwards on this and that's our new gesture. And just for a bit of fun, I'm going to label this gesture Angry Birds. And we'll see how I might put this gesture into practice in a sec. So we'll go back to home, click on Angry Birds, load it up. And I'll go over to my gesture, assistive gesture menu, select the Angry Birds gesture. And just by tapping that, it performs that entire gesture. And as you can see, quite effective in playing Angry Birds if you're quite lazy, don't feel like dragging back on the slingshot. Importantly, custom gestures can be useful when you're just not getting the hang of a gesture or you suffer from a disability which makes forming a gesture difficult. So again, just tapping, I'm literally just tapping on the screen and it performs that entire gesture. But as you can see, it's not very good when you have changing situations, so in that case I missed. So that's it for episode two. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the gestures I find to be useful for uh, getting around the iPad. And I hope you can put some of them into practice, maybe even create your own custom gestures. Next week, we'll be having a look at apps. That's the overall theme. So we'll be looking at ways to find apps, in particular medical apps for um, our health professionals out there. Launching apps, moving apps around, deleting apps. So as you can see, the next episode is quite app-focused, but I'm uh, just starting at the basics so that you can get the most out of your iPad. Thanks again, and please leave comments and feedback about what you'd like to see in future episodes.